Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Whether we admit it or not, what begins in the north will eventually make its way to the south and vice versa. The north and its Almagiri minutes. Some history trace the origin of the Almagiri system to the 11th century Bono. This Islamic learning culture was furthered by Usman Amfodi in the 19th century. In this original model, Almajirai stayed at home with their parents and attended Sangayu to learn the Quran. The schools were close to the students and their families. There were inspectors who monitor the schools and give reports to the leaders of the community. The schools were funded from the state treasury and other support. These pre-colonial era Almajirai were not street beggars because the system was well-funded and supported by the community leadership structure. The colonial masters demolished the leadership structure, deposed emirs, and defunded the Almagirai system. It was from the rubbles of this destruction that today's Almagirai system emerged. In today's system, father puts a young boy of eight on a box to the next state. Sometimes three or four states away to go and learn the Quran with no provision for food, clothing, or shelter. The teacher is an unpaid scholar who subsists on the arms from individuals and those brought in by the children he was meant to teach, but who is sent out begging to support themselves and the teacher. If these kids learn anything in Quran, it is certainly not the spirit of it that the prophet intended. For the very nature of the Almagirai system as practiced today is obnoxious and repugnant to anything the Holy Prophet will have endorsed. What I find more shameful is that the elite and political class of the North have closed their eyes for decades and watch as young children are destroyed en masse in the name of Almagirai system. The output has been poor Quranic education, no Western education, and no skills for these kids. These children's physical and mental growth are stunted, thus limiting their capacities as they emerge into adulthood. Is it that the Northern leaders don't see these kids? Could it be that they see them, but just don't think there's something wrong about hundreds of thousands of hopeless kids roaming around helplessly begging for food. As this evil becomes so familiar that the elites are just happy to drive by and drop some pigeons on the ground, watching as the kids scamper to grab the ox, as with throwing grains at chickens. The Northern leaders provide the best of Quranic and Western education for their own children. But it doesn't appear that they think these children of the downtrodden also deserve a life too. What will an Almagiri produce? Maybe more Almagiri. After all, they could be useful for winning elections and cornering nine shares of the Abuja King. Today, the Almagiri system has bred millions of hopelessly helpless kids across the length and breadth of northern Nigeria, a menace now and for the years ahead. It will come to a time when the rich and the north will no longer be able to sleep because of this heinous crime committed against innocent children. That time might be here already. I hope the South 
can smell the trouble. Yes, um, the time is yeah, here already, um, uh, Bolaho. <laughs> uh, not might be here. He's here with us already. I can also tell you that um, what um, these people are practicing is not um, the almajiri or the the um, the, system, the, the, macaranta, system. the macaranta system because also I passed through you know um, similar schools because growing up in a place like Auchi. I understand what it means to attend Makarata. Some will tell you that it is to fulfill, you know, one of the five pillars of Islam, which is zakat, um, alms giving. And if there are no beggars, you know, you won't be able to fulfill. But I also disagree vehemently with that position um, that, you know, you don't intentionally create a pool of beggars because you want to give alms. There, there you will can always, always be you can give. Yes. And even the zakat is not the way, you know, some of them go about it. And they're already feeling it now. That is why there's a pool, you know, of, um, of people that Boko Haram is consistently drawing from. And, and that's why also you see for them, their children, they send their children to the best schools, not minding whether it's a Christian school or a Muslim school. I have, you know, ministers who are called Muslims but send their children to Catholic schools in Abuja, right. Loyola J Jesuits, you know, but all they want for their kids are best. They send their children to England, to, to the good schools. Until we look at these issues and address it holistically and know that education is the best legacy, you can bequeath to any, any, anybody in any nation who will, this Boko Haram is a tip of the iceberg compared to what we have. You have all of them trooping down south now, and then we are all quarreling, we are all grumbling, because in the south, we used to think it is the northern problem. So since it is the northern problem, let's not talk about it. But now it is, has become our problem, our so collective our problem. problem. And so the earlier we point to this issue, just like Boko Haram, when it started, the northern elders maintain a conspiracy of silence, because to them, nobody wants to, you know, ruffle feathers. Um, uh, because at that time they were also scared if you criticize them, maybe they might come after you. They kept quiet. Some even went as far as saying that these people were fighting for the cause of Islam, but forgetting that that wasn't Islam. And but today, Boko Haram is even attacking them as attacked monks, at, attack churches, you, you know. So they are in a dilemma. And so with this same al Majuri system, if the governors do not stamp their feet and declare education free and restructure the ab habit of learning you know, the Quran, you're going to have a big problem, you know, waiting to come, compared to what we have in Boko Haram. What I want to say is that already we have more than a quarter of the population of Nigeria living in extreme poverty. You see, the system of the Almajirai system, as it is being practiced now, perpetuates poverty. And when we have increasingly more people, poor people in the country, we're not going to go anywhere. As liberals have said, um, it's, it's, it's wicked of any group of people or any government or any uh, location to bring children into the world and leave them without skills, without education. How do you want them to live a life? No skills whatsoever, no education. They just exist. So it's easy for you to brainwash these children and make them do whatever you want them to do. It's time for us. Uh, liberals, treasure, yeah, all have said it. Um, it's no longer a northern problem. It's a national problem now. But it is still it a, 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 a northern, problem. northern problem for the nation, really. So it's time we attacked it. Again, back to global education. It's time that uh, we stopped all this nonsense, and um, and that's because that's what I think it is. Um, religion is is becoming a, an issue of detrimental value to this country, um, and it is because we have imported religions and we just practice them without asking what, how do we understand who God is, even in our own culture. So um, when you just import things and then you're given rules that make you a better practitioner, a better Christian, better Muslim. Those are human rules. Being an al Majiri does not improve anybody's life. It does nothing but destroy people's lives. And if it was originally meant to uh, make things better, it has actually turned now for the worse, and it must be dealt with. It's, it's, the, it's the problem of the northern elites, actually. They are the ones who have destroyed the north, and they've used this system to destroy it. Now, okay, but... in 2020, 
with all the openness that we have, the global openness of the world, they can't hide it anymore. Okay, so I just wanted to, I want to leap on that because I'm, I'm conscious that time is already on the edge. Um, right. And say that, you know, I think, not to, to digress, but I think what we're looking at uh, in terms of abuse, you're looking at, and you came to that mm -hmm. with the northern elites, but you're also looking at our political elite, if you want to call them that. They will abuse, you can see our yeah. democracy has been abused. So I don't necessarily think it's right. solely down to religion or religious practice because from what um, Bolaho was at pains to state, the origins of it, as far as the religious origins, were not what it organized. turned out to be. So you just have, yes, if I you know. have a people who are ready to abuse yeah. anything, they will abuse the political yeah. system, they will abuse yeah. a religious system, they will abuse the social yeah. system. So what we yeah. need to do, I think what this kind of advocacy is very positive. All this psychology of saying it's a northern problem, I've never subscribed to that. As long as we're all within this geographical border, it has always been our problem. And to always be our problem. Anything happening in the south is our problem, in the north, in the east, in the west. We should make it our problem and we should talk about it. Even if the people in the north have been deceived into thinking it's for their welfare, we will campaign against it because we know it's not for their welfare and it's not producing anything positive for them. And we know who the real enemy are or who the real enemy is. It's those who are benefiting from it. And like he implied, using them as uh, fodder for their electioneering, and we will not stand for it. Yeah, um, unfortunately, that's um, where time permits us to anchor on this one. The writing has always been on the wall. We are merely reading it out for all to hear. After the break, I too have taken to becoming a town crier in my advocacy. According to section 14, subsection 2, paragraph A and B of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended, sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria, from whom government, through this constitution, derives all its powers and authority. The security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Their welfare is it our security. With the gradual easing of the lockdown necessitated by the pandemic, COVID-19, it has become apparent once again that in Nigeria, it is to your tent, O ye Nigerian, as it is every man for himself and God for you. Otherwise, government palliatives will not end up in government houses and pockets. When the numbers of the patients were in the region of 100 plus, we locked down Lagos, Abuja, and Ogo, and restricted movement across the country. Now that the numbers of the patients are in the regions of 4,000, 5,000, and counting, the lockdown has been relaxed. The market in cities like Lagos, Kano, Abuja, Ogo are all filled to the brim with no one observing social discern. So it is your head, security, and welfare are in your hands, and it's up to you to take care of them. As government attitude gives the impression that the situation is more of a scandemic than a pandemic. Not to talk of the president who refused to wear a face mask to receive visitors, yet expects to convince the populace to wear face masks. Please don't tell me about Trump not wearing face masks. No wonder most Americans believe he's not serious about fighting the pandemic. I didn't say President Buhari is not serious about fighting the pandemic. Need I remind you of the public demonstration by the patients at the isolation centers in Gombe over lack of medical care and food when they took to the street and barricaded them? Government seems to have swept that one under the carpet too. How about the sudden deportation of Almajuris or those, you know, from the northern region to the southern part of Nigeria, hauled in trucks, conveying cattle without parental consent or knowledge? Yet, rather than take a holistic approach to the problem with a feasible solution, we are busy arguing the politics of it. But if I may have ask, how did they cross these borders that are on lockdown? A million dollar question you would say. Even as we talk, most of the Dutton state governors are still not certain of the causes of the multiple deaths in Kano and Yobe state. Thanks to lack of autopsy reports, at least for now, all deaths can be blamed on coronavirus. But once it's abated, we thank God and move on until it happens again. How do we remain so silent in the face of glaring ineptitude and expect our security and welfare to be taken seriously by those who swore to protect and provide the same? When same doesn't matter to us. Government fails to provide healthcare facilities, water supply, social infrastructures, electricity for local businesses, transportation of goods and services, public utilities. Despite the presence of Minister of Public Utility, we turn to private individuals to provide same for us at exorbitant cost. We patronize them without complaining and turn around to praising the same government that denied and deprived us of this amenity. Yet we believe that our security and welfare is the responsibility of government. Wake up. Imagine if General Sane Abacha were alive and as ex-president donate 10 billion naira to the federal government to fight COVID-19. 
there would have been no limit to the good names we would all have bestowed on him. I tell you, there are many words on Abacha, in and out of government, living with us today. And what are we doing about them? I would therefore advocate that we all should know, as it seems we yet do not know, that not the PDP nor the APC are the ones in opposition, but all of us, as our government officials, be it in the north, south, east, and west, are united by common goal, self-enrichment and personal interest, and protection of their security and welfare, and that of their generation unborn. The earlier we unite along a common goal, interest, and purpose, while standing for the truth, no matter where it resides, the better. Otherwise, we continue to live in self-denial until we are all enveloped by the consequences of our silence. Then and only there will Nigeria spring forth from the arches of mediocrity to the hills of knowledge, wisdom, peace, and unity. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the word that stays, uh, stands bold for me out of your advocacy is the word unity. I think we've done enough of complaining in a very, in a sense, the unproductive kind of complaining. It's good to identify the problem, but when you're complaining in a very a divisive way. You're looking for everybody else is a problem and you're not looking at solutions. United we stand is still something that I'm looking forward to seeing because Nigeria, we're a very rich country, whether rich in capital resource, um, rich in human resource, rich in mineral resource. So the day we pull together finally and begin to see what holds us, because a lot of people have complained that we don't have an ideology, a common ideology that drives us. What is it that we really want to see for the future of Nigeria? Apart from, so let's not get sold this lie about tribalism, religiousisms, and various other things that Is are trying. Yeah, let's, let's begin to say, as a people, we are strong together. I really am looking forward to that day. And it helps us to actually identify the true enemy. We started saying that in the previous advocacy. These elitist people who have a selfish interest of keeping us divided, keeping us happy to see us, you know, like the Amajiri system sustained yeah. so that they will have a, an advantage over us. Let's stop pandering to their, their you know, their silly... Um, whatever it is they're selling us. And let's begin to recognize the strength in each and every one of us. In Libros, in yourself, in myself. No, it doesn't matter our background. We're all in Nigeria together. Let's begin to own our own future. And, and one of the ways I see we can do that is to stay with an advocacy long enough. I love the way you're staying with the sanitary pad. Stay with it. Push it. Get a solution. Let's not completely, one minute we're shouting about one thing, then we abandon it the next. Let's stay with it and unite behind a singular purpose. If it's health, let's unite behind it. Even here on The Advocate, if we can come together under one umbrella, let's push it till we see a solution. That's, that's my own, you know, my hope. Well, uh, for me, I think Nigerians are spread thin. We keep hoping for the government to wake up someday and do something that will, that will be cherry <laughs> to all of us. But you see, um, Libra said something about the palliatives. So much money, but we haven't seen anything. Look at what's it's going on. It's in private on. pockets. Well, so, are we, uh, do we want to pursue the palliative? Let's pursue one thing. Let's not just there are complain lots of and then throw our hands up. Even in this palliative provision, providing mm. palliatives to people, a lot of individuals, and I think they're the ones who even have more results than this so-called yeah, government palliatives. That's true. So that's do true. we want to get behind the individuals, abandon the, you know, you know, or do we want to pursue the government? Let's find a cause. The government is not working for uh, us. Maybe, it's not maybe, working. Chuka, maybe Chuka has an answer to that. Uh, yes. It's uh, not uh, working. Question. Yes, I, I'm looking for a cause we can <laughs> pursue to an end point. I think our problems are two things, democracy and corruption. And because we can't get a hang of those two, we're, we're going to be, we're not, we're not going to make any progress until we deal with those issues. Before we can talk about unity uh, as, as a country, unity is typically driven by a common purpose. Yeah. So the people Good. that we expect Good. to unite must have a common purpose. Yeah. We don't have Which a common truth. purpose. Which is truth. Unite and behind until we find those clearly, we may not be able to advance and move forward as well so, so what as, might they as, be as Let, let's say that it was left to you to define a common, common purpose, purpose for nigeria what would you what would you identify a common purpose for example um would be in different we'll define it in several areas if i take a health if i take health care for example when president buhari came in as a president i i um an, an astral clinic was in that state that it was you cannot blame the man they said they went out for healthcare. That's fine. There was nothing in the astral thing. But it was well, because the vision of a people is the vision of the leader. So the leader was well say, oh, by the time this term is over, 
this hospital must be in a state that I can receive my health care. Okay. Well, um, if I say it and treasure Bolango, Ekene, and Chuka says it, then we are making progress towards that ripple effect treasure spoke of. Here's where you say what's on your mind. Last week, my Reverend Father, Reverend Father Philip, says, I love you, I love your tag, rivers of wickedness. My question is, are we in a kangaroo land? Our governors should be human. They should not victimize the populace. Please, Mr. David should know that our democracy is lopsided. He was talking about David's advocacy last week. It's not a true democracy. It's not a government of the people, but for a selected few. On the Advocate Special Edition, Nigeria is not oil rich. Scott Hopkins says, I don't think it is the country which is poor, but how the resources are being managed in the country. You have a point, Scott. On rivers of wickedness, which is provoking a lot of reaction, Teslin Oye says, I want to hear more solutions and less complaint. Otherwise, the only thing on the horizon for all of us is a nasty, nasty storm. Oye, if you pay close attention, you observe that we always propose solutions. And that's why I always say, this is my advocacy. We're advocating for a better society along with our partners. Well, along with you, our partners. Thank you for your feedback, though. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. Or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustv.com forward slash the Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, it looks like Chuka has a blueprint for a new order. Lay it out for us, Chuka.